Good morning, OHS, and welcome to another episode of Buck Buzz. I'm Roman. And I'm Jake. Today we're going to show some segments not only about news around the school, but also different things going on around Oswego. Let's get started. So, Jake, I assume that you know about how the Common Core has been set in many schools around the country. Yeah, and many people have different opinions about it. Yeah, well, taking a closer look to the matter, let's hover to Greg Caster and see the effects of Common Core in Oswego. The Common Core system is a new curriculum New York State has implemented into our education system. It covers primarily math and English, and the underclassmen, such as the freshmen and sophomores, have already been converted while the upperclassmen have yet to be switched. We recently talked with some of the faculty who have had to switch to the Common Core curriculum. They talked to us about how it is different from the curriculum they had to teach prior. What are your thoughts on Common Core being implemented? Um, well, with like everything, there's always two sides. So there are some positives to, um, to it being implemented, as well as some negatives. Um, we we'll start with maybe some of the negatives, where um, things are constantly always changing. You never get a definitive answer on things. Um, and how should we implement some of the Common Core standards uh, based on the subject field that you teach. Um, some of the positives is that one thing I heard was that we aren't providing enough <clears throat> material here for the kids to prepare them when they get to college. So I'm liking what some of those standards are trying to say to get them ready for college and career readiness. Do you believe that uh, Common Core is for everyone? I don't believe that Common Core is for everyone because everyone learns differently. Uh, I don't think as a society we have managed to pinpoint that and been able to implement ways that will reach all students. Um, if you could uh, change one thing about the curriculum of Common Core, what would you change in, uh, if you could give a reason why? That's a great question. Um, I don't know exactly what I would change about Common Core. Um, I know that maybe some things don't work in an English classroom, but some of the standards would work better in a math classroom, vice versa, and as well as other subject fields. I think the Common Core would be tough to implement because it's a whole new way to teach. Definitely. And it's also going to be hard for the students that are older and they have to deal with learning with Common Core at a later age than others. Yeah, because no one's used to it yet. Mm -hmm. Well, moving on to other news around Oswego, the City Council is seeing future funding for renovations with Lighthouse. The Oswego Landmark has found disrepair over the past few years is in dire need of repair. Justin Rudrick, Community Development Director, will submit a preliminary application to Assemblyman in Will Barclay's office requesting financial assistance for a Lighthouse project. The council will then discuss where to take the project next in order to preserve the local landmark that has become an important part of Oswego's history. Well, I hope they find a way to fix the lighthouse. It's definitely an important part of the community. So, you know, winter is fast approaching, and with it comes hockey season. The school's hockey program has been very good these past few years, and Noah Lee interviewed a senior on the team, as well as a fan, to take a closer look into the school's hockey team. Let's take a look. I'm Noah Lee here with WBUC News. Recently, I caught up with my friend, teammate and Buck hockey player Michael Chesard asked him a few questions about Buck Puck, as well as Buck hockey super fan Liam Moran. I'm here with Buck hockey senior Michael Chesard here to ask him a few questions. Mike, how long have you been on the hockey team? Uh, this will be my fourth season. And what is your favorite part about being on Buck Puck so far? Uh, you know, I like hanging out with my friends and getting on the ice every day. You know, our team's just like a bunch of brothers, so I like I love being with them every, um, all season. So. What are your goals for senior year? Well, hopefully we can make it to Buffalo, which would be sectionals. You know, we got to all come together as a team, and hopefully we can make it there at the end of the season. And what do you feel your role will be as a senior on this team? You know, there's a lot of leadership on the team, but as a senior, I feel like I got to step up with the other seniors and just make sure the team comes together as one team. And there's no fighting or anything on the team. We're all brothers on the ice no matter what. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm here with Buck Hockey Superfan Liam Moran here to ask him a few questions about Buck Buck. 
Liam, about how many uh, buck hockey games do you go to a year? I try to make as many as I can. I usually make at least ten. And what's your favorite part about Buck Bucks? Well, seeing all the hockey, you know, I can't get enough of it. Seeing all my friends there watching uh, my buddies play like you and uh, Sam Lafine, you know. He's great. Who would you say your favorite player is? No doubt Sam Lafine. Kid's an animal in the net. <laughs> He's a wall. He's a great tendy. Yep. Thank you. Yep, no problem. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to save the date, November 23rd, first Buck Buck scrimmage. Have a good day. I'm Noah Lee. That was very interesting. I look forward to seeing how the team does this season. Yeah, me too. I hope to make it sectionals. Now for some school news. A senior at OHS, Jenna Ballard, has been named a commended student in the National Merit Scholarship Program. This is a prestigious distinction as she is placed in the top 5% of more than 1.5 million students that took the PSAT in 2014. A spokesperson for the National Merit Scholarship Committee commented, the young men and women being named com commended students have demonstrated outstanding potential for academic success. These students represent a valuable national resource. Recognizing their accomplishments as well as the key role their schools play in the academic development is vital to the advancement of educational excellence in our nation. Congratulations, Jenna. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, have you ever wondered what makes a foreign speaker so significant? Greg Castor and Zach Carey have made a segment highlighting all the historical and important information regarding this popular Oswego landmark. Let's have a look. Fort Ontario, one of Oswego's oldest but most popular landmarks, is an area that has provided a great deal for our city. First built back before the Revolutionary War of 1776, it has stood through the War of 1812, the French and Indian War, and the Revolutionary War. We recently spoke with Paul Lear, the current supervisor of the fort. He went into more detail about the history of the fort across the last 200 years of its operation. It was first built by the British in 1755 during the French Indian War, destroyed by the French in 1756. It was rebuilt by the British in 1759 uh, during the Revolution. It was a refugee center in uh, a, a British base to invade the Mohawk Valley and the rest of New York. It was destroyed by the Americans, by the Continentals in 1776. The fort today is used as a place for various events throughout the years, such as the Kite Festival, and an area where people can choose to view the fireworks on the 4th of July in Harbor Falls. The next few weeks we have our biggest fundraiser, our ghost tours in the uh, During the year, ghost hunting groups gather information in the rooms and the ground casemates, buildings, the grounds. They put it all onto DVDs and laptop computers. They present it to the public in all the places where it was gathered. It's kind of interesting, a different type of uh, event. Uh, it's very popular uh, and well attended, almost sold out. Wow, I never knew all that information about the fort. Yeah, I learned a lot. Well, that concludes our show. Thanks for tuning into this week's edition of the Buck Buzz. Make sure you tune in next week to get the latest news about school and the community in another installment of Buck Buzz.